In today's episode of EU4, I'll show you how to merge all these tiny states into one true mighty Russian Empire, while keeping the Commonwealth intact. Hello imperialists, this is Lukas, ah, Moscow. Right from the start, we're faced with a bit of a disaster. We're technically a tributary of the Mongol Empire, but you know, just in name, it doesn't really cost us much. From unique features, we begin with a certain not-so-pleasant privilege which we can get rid of fairly quickly. We also received a gigantic, really gigantic Russian mission tree, which we can further expand two or three times, or maybe two times something like that. Anyway, let's jump into the game. First, let's designate our rivals. Novgorod, definitely. Lithuania as well. But I'm not taking the Danes because I don't want to get entangled in a war with the Swedes. At least not now. I'm immediately directing our army towards Novgorod since we'll be fighting this country almost immediately. I'm hiring advisors solely for diplomacy and military. Unfortunately, I didn't get any great options. Alright, I'll have a slightly larger army. Always a plus. We won't take an administrative advisor and we'll keep an administrative focus, I'll need a lot of those points. A lot. And most importantly, remember that in 11 years, you kill Vasily and put Ivan on the throne, because he's much better. As for our estates, we're only taking one administrative monarchy point. We sell our land, then increase stability by one point, and we can get rid of that privilege that delays reform progress in our country by 33%. That really hurts. I'm taking additional loans from the burghers and adopting the early subjugation privilege, while it provides nice bonuses at the start. It can become problematic later on, remember to keep an eye on the influence of your estates. Make sure they don't get too high as you'll be acquiring a lot of land from Novgorod which will increase your crown land. The other privileges are nothing special, so here they are and in the end I'm reclaiming the land. Oh, this is something new and I didn't get the cheaper advisor I wanted. Oh well. I mean, I got one, but not the one I was hoping for. So, I'm hiring the tax guy, and most importantly, I'm hiring the mercenary army, the free company, and the grand company. We're mustering our army. And take note here, many guides make a mistake. A big mistake. I don't know why someone playing as Muscovy would choose permanent territorial claims on these areas, or from other missions, when you can get such nice bonuses as Russia. Yes, our grand duchy needs to grow even faster. Look at how many countries have our territories that we need to reclaim. Alright, before declaring war, we're also removing the cavalry from our armies. We don't need it at all. It's only slightly better than infantry, but twice as expensive. And for those who'll get upset next, uh, he's getting rid of the cavalry. Doesn't he know it's so OP, etc. After all, this game is a siege simulator, not about battles. Additionally, let's summon some generals and hopefully we get some good ones. Alright, only one with any siege bonus. Weak! It's time to reclaim Novgorod for ourselves, and while at it, let the vassals do the dirty work here. After all, we have quite a few of them. Ha, huh, I forgot about the diplomats. Alright, one is definitely going to Austria, one is heading to Poland, and the third, once he's back, will start improving relations with our vassals. No chance. But seriously, at this point, are they trying to hurt my grand plans of building a great and powerful Russia? Well, they should know their place. Admittedly, our budget is losing a bit of money here. But you know, it's Russia. We don't worry. We can always take money from someone else. But what? Pay a tribute? No. Did they really get angry with me? And so substantially? Not just by five. Ah, the parents paradox is misleading. Maybe next time I'll pay. At least now you know what not to do. Novgorod has fallen, so we're carpet seeking the rest of this country. Hey, we have a cheaper advisor. Work on the tech tree, I won't pay you that much. From the war, we first take out the vassals. Of course by conquering them. A very nice war score, 96%. And now I'll show you what not to do. Many guides do it this way, they separate Novgorod from Sweden and so on. But don't do that! The lands in the north are worthless, they won't give you anything. Everything here has a development of three, maybe four, but no more. All of Novgorod's wealth is in these provinces, and we want them. Plus, of course, money. I don't take war reparations because Novgorod guarantees Tver. This means I need two diplomats and I wait until the first of the month, because then I do something like this. I make peace with Novgorod. A victorious war. And then I attack a country they guarantee safety too, dragging Novgorod into another war with us. We direct our army back to Novgorod as quickly as possible. We want to besiege all their provinces to get them out of this war. This time for money. As as you can see, I can still take a lot, as well as war reparations and rival humiliation. My opponents stand no chance. With Novgorod, I take the only justifiable peace. Unless you want to attack them quite soon, then just take the money. 
that will give you 7 years of peace, not 15. But as I said, these territories are worthless. And what? We annex the rest of Novgorod? Almost at least. At least it's our cultural group, so it'll join quickly. Debts repaid after these wars. But maybe let's get rid of corruption in this country, right? I know it's a bit unorthodox, but let's try to play this way. We're not worried about it. I will aim for an alliance with Poland, either Poland or Austria. In this case, Austria somehow doesn't want an alliance with me, so we won't have one for now. But if such an option arises, we'll take an alliance with Austria. Poland, because they would likely help me in wars against the Ottomans. Austria would be even better, since they have the Ottomans as a rival. We end the war under the siege of Ryazan. Oh my god. I didn't call him separately? Oh well. And just the same, Tver disappears from the map, and we could click the consolidation of Russia now. But let's not do it at this moment. Only when Ivan takes the throne. Because this bonus simply lasts for the duration of the ruler's life. Well, we've acquired a few provinces. That's why I'm now granting supremacy over the crown and the cheaper advisors. I'm also forging an alliance with Poland. I know, it's strange, given that we're facing an impending wave of rebellions. Let's tighten our grip on our territories. By reducing autonomy in them, to quell the rebellions, I, of course, use the mercenary army, to which I assign our ruler, hoping he might be struck by a stray arrow. I'm counting on it. From the second agent, I finally have a cheaper advisor. All territories from Novgorod will join our empire, to be properly fortified. Admittedly, it's a rather unusual site, in which Burgundy is beating France. Furthermore, we're integrating the Novgorod and Ryazan cultures into ours, even though it costs diplomatic points. But we'll start benefiting from it sooner. Will I trample the Great Horde in two years? Let's try, especially since I just adopted the fourth military technology. And remember, with the Hordes, we shouldn't really be fighting on any flat terrains. Instead, look for forests or mountains. Oh, because they get a penalty then. Fortunately, we have a tournament. See, if you fight them on flat terrains, they get a nice bonus. Don't do that. Oh no, my king has died. Oh no, how dreadful. Really, I'm not joking. He couldn't have died at a better time. Well, 64%, 64%. Will that fortress finally fall? And we made it. All right, don't engage with two enemy units either. That's foolish. By the way, we captured the capital of the Golden Horde, so we no longer have to pay them tribute. I really like this Radical Reforms event. You know why? Because we get a ton of points. We just need to get rid of actually nobody. Because we release my epic advisors. And we get points for free. I recommend it. And we can rehire the advisors. Patriarchate, I totally forgot about it, but I didn't really need it yet. You know, these are religious matters where we can get some bonuses for 10%, which at 100% are really good. Or alternatively, buy icons for 10%. The first government expansion. And we'll go with the separation of boyars because we'll need that modifier soon. Yearly government power. Don't know what that is? I don't know either. But before this piece, I'll use the icon for reduced aggressive expansion. Where was it? Here. And that. And here. I do the same trick as before with Tver. A bit differently though, because I need to fabricate a claim on Circassia and attack it the next month. The Golden Horde will defend it, because it's their tributary. Let our diplomats sanction our wars with Gazikumuk and Crimea, and this time we easily defeat their troops. And we're moving on to Circassia. I complete the mission to break our pledge. Yes, I just forgot to do it earlier and I also forgot to click the mission to consolidate Russia, which I do now. Ooh, when did I have a civil war? It's really written here. The event chain, the Muscovite civil war, has been concluded. When did that happen? Were those the peasants? Vasily. Ouch! and another country joins our beautiful nation. The best part is that the Ottomans still don't know of my existence. Besides, these provinces here we can calmly consolidate to reduce their development and coring costs, provided there are any that can be done, because these are usually quite poor provinces. I also began the annexation of less useful duchies. Like Perm, another one tries to overthrow me. No, I plan to introduce the Renaissance in Moscow. Of course, we develop using diplomatic and military points. I will keep the administrative ones for technology development and for choosing the first idea and of course for developing infrastructure and beautifully as Russia we now have cheaper level 2 advisors of all kinds for half the price and on top of that our ruler supports this something very bad has happened in the Empire but the Bohemians really meanwhile our troops continue to move and occupy the northern Caucasus all the way here to open our path to Persia you know the Persian region is one of the richest in the world actually did you know patch 136 is coming soon and they will finally address this 
region. Shervan is not aware of my existence, but fortunately, they grant me military access. I have a feeling that the Ottomans are really gearing up for war with me. Luckily, they won't answer the call. It's not that Great Moscow is afraid of this green blob. Oh, no, no, no. At least not yet, or maybe so. I was supposed to slow down with the conquests, but the Ottomans just started throwing alliances left and right. It's time to choose an idea. And here's what I recommend. One of these first two ideas to start with. All of them will work perfectly for Russia the first era development, and here, definitely aggressive expansion. Of course, Russia is the most peaceful country in the world and only engages in defensive wars. Our nation has become so big that I need to start granting privileges to increase government capacity. Remember, we are still a duchy. Let's get rid of some redundant forts, especially those in the steppes. They will be completely useless to us. We keep only those in forests. Finally, I have a mission to convert provinces. Yes, I will want to convert my provinces, but I was lacking a cheaper minister in this matter. Could this be a problem? The third bureaucracy related reform, and really two could be useful for us. Either go towards decentralization, because an additional accepted culture will always help us with converting provinces. But still, this bonus of plus 50% to taxes for Russia will be quite good, right? Everyone will now pay me 50% more. By the sixth level of technology, the cavalry is no longer as useful, that it's worth adding them to the army. And it's also worth upgrading some of our units to these special Muscovite ones. Although not entirely, time for reforms and I predict that the military ones will be more useful than the trade ones. Time to invade Kazan. Of course Kazan, because there's a gold mine here that we should conquer by now. It seems they're at war with all the hordes. Oops, too bad. They'll have to handle it. If we're fighting in these steps here, better not exceed 12,000 in army size, because most of these territories don't allow for maintaining larger numbers of troops, and it's a waste to pay more in attrition here. Oh, I've discovered paper. The real reason for this war has just been achieved. We conquered Crimea, and here you are, already dealing with the Ottoman Empire, so unfortunately we have mutual relations. Meanwhile, the Bohemia are undergoing reforms. Bohemia allied with the Ottoman Empire? What has happened here? Oh, and the Timurids are also in a bad spot. But as the first country in the world to implement the seventh military technology, we're soon adding artillery. We're raising the price of copper, and we'll be waging war against the Ottoman Empire soon, because we can also get into a coalition. So I need the longest periods of peace with them. It's time for the biggest war of this episode, that is, the the war for the Russian Crimea, which we have to take from the Ottoman Empire. Ah, oh, wait a month. I'm sending half of our army to the Timurids, and the other half I'm sending to the Czechs, because Poland seems to conquer them very slowly. Actually, this is a pretty good moment to attack the Ottoman Empire, because they're at war with Venice and the Purple States, and we have the chance to develop the Kremlin. E, all right. What's with Timur? He's fleeing from my battles, and not at all, because I have a two technology advantage. All right, I'll steal Persian maps from the Ottomans. I have one of the worst scenarios scenarios Timur has consolidated. From two major vassals, Moscow's troops are already near Constantinople, and I'll actually allow myself to bombard this city. But I'm dumb. Why didn't I burn down their capital? Really, my own stupidity surprises me sometimes. In this war, probably only the Poles will fight the Ottomans. I never managed to do it. Same with Timur. Clearly, my armies just run around, right? And that's the only way I managed to catch the Ottoman army. Admittedly small, but still, this trick always works. When you have a black flag, the AI doesn't see you. Now, how to affect effectively convert all these provinces here without having religious ideas. On Muscovy, it's quite easy, just at the province you want to a state. But be careful, we don't core it a second time. Thanks to this, we can deploy local missionaries everywhere. Since I've already converted the entire Mishar culture, we can detach it and accept the Crimean culture. This way, we can convert these provinces a bit faster. Ottoman army battles Great Moscow and her allies, but they're escaping. I conclude the war with the Ottoman Empire as follows. I take Constantinople from them, plus a province from which I'll release Byzantium in a moment. I take a province to release Bulgaria. I take a province in Crimea. This one is very important because if you place a fort on it, you block passage through the Caucasus to you. Similarly, we have a fort in Baku, which does exactly the same thing. And an Ottoman without Constantinople is a spineless Ottoman, and they won't be able to recover from this. And remember, don't press core all at this moment because we have some provinces that are currently being converted, and we don't want to have a full core there. It's a pity that Karograd will be changed back to Constantinople. Oh! I don't have loans. Well, it's time to build churches. Let's also start developing our marketplaces in Novgorod. I know it's a bit late, but I always forget about it. And we want to have the largest market share percentage here. From the Danes, I acquire all of Norway. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get Sweden, at least not in the usual way. And to avoid getting bored, I also finalize the matter with Novgorod, which will finally allow us to solve the problem of the entire 
region. Now it's time to deal with Karakoyunlu and finally open our gates to Persia. Come on, will you finally fall? How long can I wait for this? 57, 64%. Because why not? Finally, after 474 days, actually, that's not that long. See, this fortress is very useful, though even better ones are in the mountains, but we will only rebuild those after capturing those territories from Karakoyunlu. The armies of Karakoyunlu cease to exist. All right, most of these forts where I lost gigantic amounts of manpower are captured. Started with 42,000. Now I am 5,000 in the negative. But unfortunately, these territories are costly. Tough, but there's no time to dawdle. We're going into another war with the Horde. After all, there are many territories to capture. But since Poland is helping us, let them conduct this war. Seems like 11 points, but maybe not. It's time to finally get an additional bonus for conversion. And now it doesn't look so bad, right? It's time to establish Arkhangelsk, a very important port city. Right here, precisely. Time to liberate ethnically orthodox territories in Edirne. Of course, with the help of Poland. And the great Christian army sets out to battle the Ottoman Empire. Look at the armies of the infidels. They stand no chance. We're passing through them as if they didn't exist at all. All. And again, the Muscovite troops are under Constantinople, but this time we are liberating it. Well, will the Polish troops manage? Seems like they will. Well, well, the birth of Ivan E.V. the Terrible. Why not? Let Ivan ascend to the throne. But honestly, I feel like the Ottoman Empire is much weaker in this patch, and the AI really struggles with it. Oh no, I engaged the Ottoman troops without a general, but I won. Hey, I even fought in this war. Wow. Although I didn't capture much from the Ottomans, now let's move on to the war for Mandarin. With Q Q, we will shorten our peace period, unless I will foolishly engage the enemy one last time. This doesn't bode well. No, the losses. No. Oh yes, Korostan, look at how many territories it has here. We need to conquer that. Let the boyars handle this matter. Wow, what a powerful mission. Look, depending on which icon we choose, we get the following bonuses. I won't lie. Cool, I'll wait with this mission until the next era, because this era is already coming to an end, and next is the religious era, and this is the best era for conquering. So many Many nations to liberate. Just look at how many there are. As always, I forgot to steal maps. All right, countries in India, not all of them know about me, but either way, I need to improve relations with them, especially with the Oirats, so they don't form coalitions against me. Well, a hunch on the Black Sea is there, but I have to admit, I've moved much further. Look, now we can fortify this entire region. Why didn't I take this mission earlier? Look at all the claims I have now. I should have read that mission earlier. You won't believe it, but the Mamluks just attacked the Ottomans and lost the war. How? wrong gold number and I'll stick with that. What a mess, I can't believe it. But don't worry, Khorastan will be devoured. The country might get a little upset, but I don't care. We are Russia. Everyone will forgive us. All right, maybe we're not Russia yet, but the horde is secured. I've also introduced colonialism. I did this quite unbelievably, stupidly, because in the Kolomna province, next to Moscow, just to make it easy. I developed it mainly with military points. Remember that you have the Kremlin here, which works locally. God, isn't it for the entire area? I even know which monument I confused it with. I also formed an alliance with the Mamluks. This is the only Sunni country with which I don't necessarily want to wage war and I know there's a chance they will join a coalition against me. So in the upcoming wars, I will border them anyway. If they break the alliance with me, they will be the target of my conquest or they will be my money farm, one of the two. But the fact that the Ottomans are too weak to be my rival. Did they go bankrupt? No, they only have 3,000 in debt. Honestly, I don't know why I'm wasting my valuable administrative points on horde territories, but let them have it. That's where the missions are leading me, and I overdid it for the first time. All right, I will also wait a moment with this mission. There it is, finally Protestantism has appeared somewhere, even a few times, I think. Who am I at war with now? QQ and friends, and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth has been established. Appreciate that I didn't conquer it, that I allowed it to emerge, because normally it's better to conquer it earlier, much, much earlier. I know I should have chosen humanist ideas, or play to annex my vassals, but somehow I can't imagine Russia without taking religious and quantity ideas. It just fits this country so well that I can't play any other way. And look at this beauty. Our borders finally touch with the Mamluks. Hey, is this the same color? I think it's the same color. But not for long because we're about to adopt Russian ideas. Additionally, a new mechanic related to modernization will appear. We'll need it to complete several upcoming missions. And to speed up this modernization, we need to take away privileges from our estates. Our missions have just expanded. But as I said, this is only the second stage. We will have a third one. Besides, let's establish the Tsar Dome. Remember the privilege I got rid of at the beginning of the game? This is the moment when we should act 
actually get rid of it. Ashes to ashes. We must also focus on producing fire water. And I really don't understand why Poland doesn't have such a mission. And now the fifth reform, which is super important for Russia. We can either support the boyars or this kind of peasant infantry. Call this special Russian infantry. If we choose the boyars, look at the two powerful privileges we have for infantry and for cavalry. I wonder if it would be possible to shape Russia with Polish ideas, because I know that I definitely plan to have Prussia with these boyars. However, I will go with the Russian infantry, especially now that it is even more reinforced. We get a 10% EK to eat every time we use this skill. And it's really nice right now with this Russian government. It keeps getting stronger the more we develop our country. And Tsardom is not its highest level. For the next ideas, I choose offensive ones, because you know we need to defend more effectively, especially in foreign forts. Now, in essence, wars with the Ottoman Empire are just a formality. Actually, as Russia, we already have so much government that I can afford to build all of my territories in Eastern Europe, literally all of them. But Persia, Levant or the Tataris will all be our trade companies. But I also forgot about the Siberian frontier, so we start colonization. How pleasant, I must admit. A very nice reform just triggered for Russia. I hadn't seen it before. Everyone will pay taxes, everyone will pay. How this will hurt me financially when this era ends soon. Victory over the Ottoman Empire began and the golden era in our Russia. Russia also has a fairly unique form of government, allowing it to make claims over an entire area. Fabric claim on Arya. The era changes and I earn 10 gold less in taxes. And honestly, for the first time, I'll go for the decentralization of our bureaucracy. I also finally moved our capital to St. Petersburg. All right, a monopoly on fire water is definitely needed. At last, our super important mission. Normally, it should start from three to four years. I waited 10. I love my luck. This event gives us two new forms of government, either on the second level, something like that, or to manage our state on the third level. And honestly, this reform is much better for me. Actually, I shouldn't have spent those points on decentralization. Silly me. And thanks to this, we can continue to modernize our country. Our country is expanding, so we'll probably go for the administrative reform. And it will also allow me to introduce it faster at the 12th level of administrative technology. To get rid of that privilege, as long as I have it, I can forget about modernizing the country. But it doesn't matter, so we need to continue conquering. Ooh, we'll call Egypt for help, because then it won't get aggressive expansion. And what an event this is. Quite a pleasant, if you're wondering why I'm taking these worthless provinces from Timur instead of the Persian part. It's because I don't have access here and I can't take these provinces for myself because I'm so stupid that I didn't make a passage through Kara Koyunlu. All the hordes have finally fallen and paid us tribute. So this time, I didn't make that mistake. I secured access to the richer provinces of Timur. I wonder when Timur went bankrupt and when he will recover from it. Now it's time for a war against Sweden, the Swedish deluge, but in a better version where we flood the Swedes. All right, it's finally time to commence our further invasion towards the steppes because I have too many administrative points and it's really about these claims because I need them now. And now we can address the matter of our church. To further distribute coring costs, this will come in handy soon as we can conquer even more. And as you can see, more countries are holding our territories. I have no idea how this is happening. I literally just clicked and Timur went bankrupt. Okay, waging four wars at once probably isn't too much, right? You can't say I'm greedy. After all, I didn't take Stockholm. And why not? I'll wage another war against the Ottomans. All right, maybe I went a bit overboard with that ambition, but not entirely, because now we can colonize all of Siberia. However, to Safiguard Siberia, I'll need about 20,000 troops patrolling there. And now an important decision lies ahead for Russia. We can codify the peasant serfdom or set the peasants free. Unfortunately, if we want to modernize Russia, we need to free them. I need to play Russia someday without choosing early serfdom privileges. And now the modernization progress of our country has accelerated, but we can speed it up even more. Because from every Western country, we can steal this modernization for 30 spy strength. We steal technology from Spain, even from Poland. And now it's time to modernize our country. It's going well, very well, and beautifully. Almost all of Persia is under our boot. Khorasan and Musran are our vassals, and I've acquired Chagatai as our vassal to implement absolute monarchy. I really don't know why vassals are needed for an absolute monarchy, but so be it. Now all that's left for us is to modernize our government. And for for the modernization, we need a significant rival to humiliate. I wonder if it highlights Hungary here, Poland, Spain, Portugal. But my only rivals can be Poland and Spain. Well, we have good relations with Poland, so unfortunately, war with Spain. Ooh, we have good support, although I have no idea how I will get to Spain. Regarding the construction of my trade companies, I have hired
highlighted entire areas here, but in reality, I added single provinces. To the trade company, I only added provinces that have some trade bonuses, none other. That's why then every other province, which is not in a trade company, gets quite a significant bonus to goods production, dependent on the trade company and its strength in a particular region. Look, it's here. Okay, I managed to get access. We're marching our army to Spain. And honestly, I'm tempted to conquer Naples for myself. I could then take all of that back and I'd have Rome right next to conquer and convert to Protestantism. Orthodox fool, and I won't lie, our income is pretty good now. Look at that, 63 gold from trade, a lot from production. Taxes are also decent and Kurdistan integrated. It looks good. The first forts are behind us. Now it's time to take the worst ones in Spain. Although I never understand why the bot deletes that mountain fort. It's mighty. I won't bother with a vassal. What a pity. But I have to do it to get in here and play out Rome. Remember that you can also engage in colonization in this region. And when you come across a good you don't like, for example, here I have fur. It's not about those furry animals, it's about the fur itself. You can abandon it and establish it again, and then you get another draw for the goods that will be found here. Come on, come on, 85%. I'm quite unlucky with forts in this campaign. Spain humiliated, so we've proved to the world that we are a civilized country. And I guess this is the Russian method. We attack a neighbor and tell everyone that it's a way of bringing civilization and the time has come to create the Russian Empire. Goodness, these modifiers are mighty. And here, more of them. Look, 20% tax increase, reduced idea cost, all estate influences reduced by 10, province autonomy decreased by 15, and now we're executing the Great Imperial Ambitions mission. And it changes our country's technological group from eastern to western. This probably gives us the strongest infantry in the game and opens the third stage of building our empire. Oh, we now have cheaper infantry, how nice, as well as some special government reform, wow, let's create the Holy Synod. Okay, an additional missionary, this is what we need, we're heading to Sweden, I think we'll settle their case, I'm just wondering what reduced the limit of my special units, I have 90 out of 48, and I had a limit of 120 just a moment ago, now I've just noticed that I no longer need further modernization. So, haha, <laughs> it's time to grant privileges, Sweden disappears from the map, and almost no one cares, it's time to catch up after the slowdown down from the wars with Spain. Although it cost me a lot of manpower, we'll manage. I won't deny it. My alliance with the Mamluks is coming to an end. We're smashing the entire Ottoman army on this island. Seriously, the entire Ottoman army fled here and now they should probably retreat from here. No, we completely destroyed it because the Mamluks are blocking. It seems the religious war has erupted, but I honestly don't care. This Europe looks so strange, very atypical. And now having conquered Manchuria, I can colonize practically all all the way to the ocean. Now I'll wait 10 years for my manpower to fully recover and in the meantime I'll focus on building up my economy because it's that moment when I already have Persia so we can start its development. We are also ready to enter India. The Ming Empire also awaits conquest. Well we just have to deal with the hordes. I mean China has collapsed. Just so you know, I don't know what these Russians have but for a level 5 advisor it's 2.65 gold. If you're wondering, he's from that mission to cross the Caspian Sea. Oh so that's it. And okay, practically all of Russia is covered by patrols, there is a way to have a more stable country. Artilleries are just too expensive to have in these armies. And I won't lie, I have places to build manufactories in this country. Hey, I have a new infantry reform here. It's something OP for Prussia. And now the trade value in Novgorod is the highest in the world. 102. In the English Channel, it's 56. In Genoa, 47. And there won't be richer trade nodes than these two. Actually, we have 3,500 administrative points before the year 1600. So it's a 100% guaranteed world conquest if only I wanted to, but I don't. Entering India, I need to get rid of these strange alliances here so that I can attack each of these countries separately. Unfortunately, they've grown quite large. And of course, reach Vijayanagar as quickly as possible. Because look, conquering all this won't matter to anyone, because here the dominant religion is Hindu. Ah, that moment when you conquer too much and everything rebels against you. I only have 146% overextension. And what are we now building? The governing senate? Admittedly, a pretty interesting reform because we get Russian pride. Oh, ouch, more senators who will just applaud our actions. But for such a large country, I have quite a few provinces to distribute. And the last trace of the Ottomans has disappeared. And we control practically all of Anatolia and most of the Balkans. But honestly, now it would be appropriate to focus on Pestragusa, Kiev and achieve dominance over the Baltic Sea. This would give us a really powerful economic boost, but Poland is so strong that it seems a waste to destroy it. And our empire looks amazing. And we haven't even reached the era of absolutism yet. It's not even the year 16. Almost 4,000 development. This is a 100% world conquest. And to you, dear viewer, I recommend this episode, where from a small tribe, I create an empire rivaling this Russian one.